So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Duncan Ross, and I'm the Business Development Manager for AgriEpi Centre for the Crops Sector. Um, welcome to today's Seedling Session podcast. It's a series of events that uh, we host to allow our members to showcase, showcase their technology. Um, today, I'm joined by Zach Gazit, who is the CEO and Managing Director of Alvatech to discuss the impact of climate on farmers and how they can grow more with less water and the importance of being a green, sustainable ESG company. So good morning, Zach, and welcome. And thank you for joining okay. us today. Um, so if we can just jump straight in, if that's OK, um, there's a lot of focus on climate change and the effect that that has on agriculture. So what is your, your view on the impact uh, of crop to cropping and to individual farmers? I think first it's it's important to understand what it is climate change, especially for farmers and for agriculture, because it's a combination of several things. It is the rising temperature that increases evaporation, which means that farmers need to irrigate more and consume more irrigation water. It is the rise in the sea level that affects the salinity level of reservoirs. Uh, it is the redistribution of rain, where rain falls, not where the farmer you know, was used to see rain and, and was relying on rain, and which means that a lot of farmers don't see their wells and boreholes and reservoirs being replenished, uh, and they need actually forced to move uh, you know, from depending on rain to drip irrigation. Um, the bottom line is that if you add to that the, the droughts and the fires and everything that you see, you realize that farmers today in the 21st century are struggling to grow. But there's a, there's a conflict there because at the same time that farmers are struggling to grow, humanity and, uh, it keeps growing. Uh, and there's always that question of, in the next 20 years, when there's going to be an, an additional 1.4 billion people joining the existing 7.8 billion people, would farmers be able to feed them? Um, so climate change has got a huge impact. Uh, it's mainly the unpredictability that farmers are facing. It's the shortage of water. It's the increase in salinity in, in water in soil. Uh, and on a, on a global, on a planet level, but also on the individual level, um, the impact is unprecedented. And if I can just say one more thing, you know, because we are based in Europe, we sometimes don't see outside our bubble, but if you look at Africa and Asia and even the Middle East, the impact is not just that I'm going to grow less, it is that I'll probably have to close down the farm and move to the city you know, after decades or centuries and generations of that farm you know, passing in the family and I'm moving to the city uh, for unknown future. Uh, and this is a, quite a horrific phenomenon that not a lot of aware of, but negative migration because of environmental because of climate change is a growing phenomenon. Yeah, I, I guess we're, we're sort of isolated in our bubble in, in Europe and think water's not an issue, but it clearly is a, a huge issue for other parts of the world and probably a growing issue here as well. So is there a way of using ag tech to sort of develop sort of sustainable agriculture that helps stem the impact on the environment? Um, yes, you actually see it happening as we speak, and this is, I think, one of the most exciting things that happening today in the technology world. If, if until you know a decade or two, or even less, the focus was on cybersecurity, fintech, and today ag tech is is a bubbling you know sector because the world realized that not only that you need to solve the issues that I just mentioned, you cannot solve them in the old ways by using chemicals or by using technology that has toxic byproduct, you have to do it in a sustainable way. So you see companies in a, like our company that has an approach of how to allow farmers to use high salinity water, but in a sustainable way, 
to see other farmers that deal with water efficiency and water management um, using drone and satellite technology in order to be more efficient. If, if in the past you would say, okay, I've got a field and I just need to irrigate, today is not that simple. And, and we see that more and more and it, it grows to different direction, which I'm always excited to read about including you know specific seeds that allow you to grow crops in areas that you couldn't grow them before etc so agtech is is not only here to stay i actually predict that this is going to be one of the fastest growing industries today mainly because of the simple reason we've got less water we need more food what is the solution so how does your techn technology work and what makes it green and sustainable to sort of uh, combat some of these problems we're facing? Um, so we we developed a, quite an innovative technology that disrupts the behavior of water molecule. And we change how you know, water molecule behave when they interact with minerals. So we change the polarity, we increase the polarity of water molecules. And when they interact with mineral salt is one of them, and they dissociate the, the minerals and leach them in the ground in a way that allows farmers um, to use water that until that second they couldn't use because of the salinity level and to grow crops that until that point in time they couldn't grow. Uh, and it also helped improve the soil and health and quality. So even if the farmer, and this is a, by the way, quite a common scenario with millions, tens of millions of farmers around the world, farmers irrigate with high salinity water. They have to, because that's the only thing that they've got. It's not like they've got an alternative. So farmer irrigates with high salinity water and know that it's gonna impact the the crops and knows that after a while the, the soil is going to be clogged with uh, salt, but this is the only thing that they can do. And to flush the salt, they over irrigate. So we break that cycle you know, by using our technology, which is chemical free, which is toxic free. Uh, and by the way, the way that we design uh, all of our devices is that they're weatherproof so they can work in the desert, but also in freezing condition. Uh, and it's all solar powered, so it works with uh, farmers that don't have access to electricity. So once we treat the water and the water hit the ground, first of all, they're going to break any salt layers, crust, walls that are in the ground, which usually are the inhibitor for you know, good growth of the plants, because if the roots are touching salt, and that's more or less you know, the end of good productivity and sometimes the end of life. the plant. First thing is that we clear that. And the second thing is um, you know, we provide the farmer um, a way to look forward into the future, which we would talk about being green and sustainability. So the green side is that we're not using the chemicals and we're not producing toxic byproducts, the sustainable element is that after installing our device, the soil is in better condition than it was. And for future generation, which is usually how sustainability is being measured, future generation would have better condition than the current farmer you know, are having before they install the technology. I understand. And do you have any sort of specific case studies that can demonstrate the solution? That's that's a good question. We, we've got a whole variety of case studies from all around the world. And um, I, I think there's, there's one that I always like using because it sort of stands out. Um, and this is a case study on um, a watermelon farmer that is based in Jericho. And it stands out because when that guy approached us, that was after he was told by an agri consultant to actually, you know what, just give up. You've been irrigating the, the field with uh, saline water for years, 
And it got to the point that you know, every year you produce less and you know what, it's better that you're just gonna sell the, the field and you know, then do something else with it and go and look for something else. And he approached us. And the nice thing about our technology is the harder the condition is, the harder the challenge is, the brighter it shines. So we installed the devices there. And after seven months, uh, when he was at the harvest point, we've done the analysis. And the analysis was phenomenal. It is still, I think, an, an outstanding from all the, the different case studies that we've got because in just seven months, first of all, we had watermelons in the place that they say, just drop it. He had watermelon and he grew 50% more than he grew the year before. The second thing, he managed to reduce the water consumption by 50%. He managed to reduce the fertilizer consumption by 65%. He actually covered the subscription cost um, and we are providing you know, either as a one of sale or subscription because we want to make it affordable to as many farmers as possible. But he covered the subscription cost almost 100 times fold you know, by what he got. And sort of the, the cherry on the top was not, not only he produced 50% more, the quality of the watermelon was so high he could charge premium. So from something that was, you know what, just drop it to get to the point that you, you increase your productivity, you increase the quality and in the process you save so much water and so many, so much fertilizers. Uh, I, I always, you know, Duncan, I always like to receive the photos of the farmers. This is something that I personally ask all the distributors around the world and say, you know what, when the farmer sees the results, when he goes to the field, when, and you can see it's a, it's a love affair, a farmer in, in their field. You know, they touch everything, the peppers, the carrots, the, you know, the watermelons, the caress them. I always ask for pictures and videos of how do they look when they see the results. And this is like fabulous. I've got a video in Arabic of the farmer saying, this is not real. This is not real. This is not real. I don't believe it. The results are incredible. They're amazing. Um, and, and this is fantastic. And uh, this is what makes us tick every day when we receive another bunch of photos from a farmer that says, well, like, yeah, no, this is changing my life. This is saving my life. Oh, well, great example. And so, sort of, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying about, you know, how that would impact his you know, personal pride in doing what he's doing and encourage them to carry on um, perhaps Again, being a family farm, it's something that gives the next gener generation opportunity to sort of stay in that business. So thank you for sharing that one. Um, can you sort of explain a bit more about the green ethos of Alvatech and the importance to sort of you um, on the environmental, social and governance um, to yourselves? When we started the company two years ago, I think from day one, we knew it's going to be a green company. We knew that it's going to be more than just business there was you know people are always thinking about you know what the company is going to do and and in recent years you talk about the purpose i think this is what this is how we started the company is how can you create a business but at the same time ensure that it's green not just by title by by action and more than that how you create that Green legacy. How do you leave a green legacy behind you? And, and it's this is this is our filter. This is like our mantra. And you know? we've got a whole list of questions that every time that we do something, we ask the questions, you know, is this making the world better? Is this, you know, improving you know, the condition you know, of farmers? Is this making their life even better? Uh, is this affecting the environment? Uh, and there's a whole sort of a whole list that we ask. And if we take everything, we know that that feature, that type of technology that we're now developing is the right one. But if one of the question is, is a no, we're going back to the drawing board. Uh, because it's, 
I think this is what drives everyone in our company. It's that you know, notion that know-how that you can do a very good business uh, and make good money and bring even the company to a nice exit without giving up on being good. And if you look at the ESG element, you know, the environmental, social and governance, for me, that's incredible because this is the, the new way of companies in the 21st century to be a good company because it covers everything. If it's the environmental element, it's about the waste, it's about the pollution, it's about making sure that everything that you do has a positive or at least not having a negative impact on the environment. If you look at the social, it's about diversity. It's about the community. It's about keeping, you know, work-life balance. This is good for, you know, the world. This is good for the people. And if you look at the governance element, this is forcing us as the, the directors of the company, as the leaders of the company, to think, you know, are we doing the right thing? Are we managing the company in the right way? Is the company, as a company, is an ethical company? Is it doing the right things besides the regular business things, besides the responsibility? So if you aggregate all of this and you turn this, again, not into a title because uh, you know, a title is as every other title that's becoming trendy, everybody likes using it. But it's in the bottom line. Are you actually putting into action all those elements? You know, when you are looking for people, when you're doing everything, when when you're developing the next generation of your technology, is this is the way you know that you're thinking? And I'm in favor. You know, the more companies uh, are becoming ESG or green and sustainable. Uh, and the more I get approaches from other companies saying how it how is it to uh, to manage and to grow a green company, I'm I'm getting happier. I'm more pleased because I think you know there's still a, there's still hope for for us as as a human race, uh, and not necessarily you have to come to the to the edge when we see all the catastrophes that we see with climate change in order to make a change. Um, so this is this is great. Listen, we try to make awareness. If you look at our website, if you look at our LinkedIn page, you see that we post plenty of blogs talking about food waste. This is not what Albatech is doing. We're doing water technology, but food waste is critical. People need to be aware of it. Sure. Um, you know, we're discussing now um, launching a campaign about the imperfect perfect because 35 of the agriculture products produce is going to waste because the cucumber doesn't look straight enough or beautiful enough. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, we post blogs on, um, on the importance of women in agriculture because a lot of people don't realize that 50% of the farmers in Africa are actually women. And if you don't provide them with the tools, with the ability to keep on and uh, going to the field and, and having enough water, then you interfere with the balance there. So there's a lot of things that, you know, this is, this is how a company that believes in ESG needs to behave. It's not just promote your own thing, promote the general agenda. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think we all have a responsibility, both within companies as, as individuals to leave things in a, slightly better thing the way that we found them um, if we can continue to do that as a, as a population then hopefully we'll, we'll start redressing the balance that um, the situation we're in at the moment anyway <clears throat> excuse me um, so how do you think you can make a significant impact to sort of global agriculture I guess you're a relatively small company um, can you have that impact globally to make this huge difference that we need Yes and yes. So yes, you know, we are a small company, but yes, we can make a big impact. So based on everything that we're doing so far, we predict that in the next four years, we'll be able to grow 400 million kilograms of food more just by using our technology. And even more than that, 
farmers using our technologies can save 300 billion liters of water you know, just by using the technology. So even a small company has a big has the potential of making a big impact. We try to leverage as much as possible. That means not only we work with distributors, we work with leading NGOs. We're doing a very big project now in, in Africa with the Red Cross, for example. Okay. And the idea is that if you've got the right tool, you've got the right solution, uh, it's part of your responsibility not to go one by one. Mm -hmm. There's nearly 600 million farmers around the world. If I can get to a million, 10 million, I would already tick the box that I'm making a proper impact on the world. Uh, and we always try to encourage other and inspire other companies like ours you know, to do the same, to don't go just for the big farmers that can actually afford you know, the big devices and have the big orders, go also for the small ones. What is a, an active solution that only 1% of the farmers can afford? Always think you know, how you can make it more affordable and more accessible, more approachable. And this is something that we try to do by working with the NGOs, with governments, uh, with the distributors, with international ad companies, with uh, ad consultants. Once people are aware of the solution uh, and not necessarily just our solution, we're always happy you know, to say, hey, we heard about this, we heard about that. Um, once people are aware, that's already the first step, the first base achieved you know, in actually making the change. Yeah, I think that's probably right across the board in terms of ag tech is, is not just having the early adopters, but having a wide, widespread adoption of technology that can make a difference on a, on a big scale rather than just those sort of top 10% or, or whatever. So finally, I think we're sort of running out of time um, quite quickly, but uh, could you sort of describe your relationship with Agri Epicenter and the benefits of being involved with us? First of all, having such an opportunity, I think that also you know, shows how valuable agri is to us. It's it, There's a whole variety of things. I, I, I don't know if this video goes to, you know, podcast goes to just agri uh, you know, members, but if not, then the access to events, the ability, you know, to talk to other farmers, to other companies, um, the support to the technology, the access to technology testing facilities. For a company like ours that grows very fast, that, you know, we're now in more than 20 countries, we're developing the second and third generation of the product at the same time, having, um, support from an organization like Agri Epicenter is, is crucial. This is not something which is a nice to have. This is something that is an integral component of everything that we do. So if this goes out of the scope of Agri Epi members, I highly recommend just to pop into their website and, and take a look. Uh, we found the things that we want, the variety, the offering is so wide. Uh, if you're an active company, this is part of your responsibility to check. That's great. Thank you for that. That's uh, quite, a, quite a strong endorsement. Appreciate your, your work. So uh, I think, like I say, I think we've run out of time. So appreciate everything you've told us today, Zach. And um, thank you for joining us and good luck with everything you do in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Duncan. I'm happy, you know, I'm, I'm accessible. I'm happy to talk to anyone. And if anyone wants to, you know, get a little bit more of what we've done so far and how they can use it when they develop their own company or if the farmers and they want to discuss, uh, I'm always available. Okay, Thank that's you. wonderful. And I'm sure we can make those introductions. Thank you.